Hello, let us have a look at how we can do the initial sizing of a civil transport aircraft and we will take Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner as our test case. In this presentation we will follow a color scheme, please understand this scheme so that you know what the various colors mean. General instructions like this will be in brown color. If there are any specified values from the database of Boeing 787 then they will be shown in black color. The blue color will be the assumed values. The calculations to be carried out will be uh, marked with red color so that the moment you see a red color it means some calculations need to be done and this pause button it will be a aid to your memory so that you can stop the video when you see this button do the calculations and then resume and the values which are calculated will be shown in dark blue color. Towards the end we will compare our data with uh, some source and those comparison values will be shown in green color. Let us understand what is meant by initial sizing. At this point I hope you have already seen the video regarding initial sizing because this tutorial can only be done if you have already seen the video and if you understand what is initial sizing. So if you have not done I would suggest you stop here go back and watch those clips. If not you can go ahead. So as we know initial sizing is the estimation of aircraft's design gross weight W0 before it starts the design mission. The mission profile is specified by the user. but there are certain additional requirements which are given by the regulatory bodies. Let us look at the source of the data and comparison for this particular tutorial. We have used the output provided by Dimitri Simos in the of the piano software. So check out www.piano.arrow to where the code is described and we are going to use Boeing Dreamliner sample analysis carried out in 2005 as uh, our baseline. Let us look at some useful data about Boeing 787-8 which we will need to do this tutorial and the source of this data is also from the output uh, on piano by CMOS. We are going to look at a baseline case with 224 passengers and the operational items which are going to be carried by the crew members to serve these passengers would be 963 pounds or 437 kg. So we will add this in the crew weight. The maximum payload weight of the aircraft is 100,000 pounds or around 45.372 tons. It is assumed that the mass of the baggage and the passengers would be 210 pounds and for the crew members it would be 200 pounds each. Now from the source given by Dimitri Simos, we know that the cruise specific fuel consumption of this aircraft in loiter and cruise phases are specified as mentioned. Uh, we have mentioned here the units in the SI system. The data is actually provided in terms of uh, pounds per hour divided by pound force, but we have converted that number into milligrams per Newton seconds. And of course the wing aspect ratio is 10.58. Let us look at the mission profile of Boeing 787. The mission profile that we will consider will be a simple one which will involve several segments. So the first segment will be the warm up, taxi out and take off. The next would be the climb segment. After that we have a cruise segment and it is mentioned that the cruise altitude is 37,000 feet, Mach number is 0 0.850 and the total distance to be covered in cruise is around 8,000 nautical miles. And then we have the descent segment, we descend down to the lighter altitude 
and then there is a loiter for about 30 minutes after which you have a missed approach and then you divert the aircraft and travel a distance of uh, 200 nautical miles at a Mach number of 0.535 while flying at an altitude of 23,117 feet. These numbers have come from the source which I have already mentioned to you and finally the last segment is the approach and land segment. So this table shows you the data to be used and because it is in black color it is understood that this information is specified by the user as a mission profile. One more point you need to know which is the reserve fuel fraction, how much is the additional fuel to be carried beyond the mission fuel that is 5 percent. So the first step in initial sizing is the takeoff weight build up. So the takeoff weight can be considered to be a summation of 4 items, the crew weight which includes the items, the operational items the payload, the fuel and the empty weight. The empty weight would be the weight of the structure, the engines, the landing gear, equipment, avionics, etc. Okay. Now in this particular uh, situation, W crew is available from operational requirements as well as some regulatory requirements and W payload is a specified number. So therefore, if we can somehow estimate W fuel and W empty then we can get a first estimate for W0 which is the initial sizing. So the problem now is to determine the values of W crew and W, uh, w sorry W fuel and W empty. So these are the two unknowns which are to be determined. The equations for initial sizing are very straightforward as I mentioned you can replace W0 by a summation of 4 terms but since two of these terms are specified by the requirements or the mission we keep them in the numerator and we take the remaining 2 terms in the denominator and then we divide by W0 on both sides. So we get 2 ratios the empty weight ratio and the fuel weight ratio. So now since the numerator is known therefore to calculate W0 we only need to calculate WE bar and WF bar which are the remaining 2 unknowns. Okay, let us see how the crew weight for Boeing 787-8 is estimated. There are two kinds of crew, there is a cockpit crew inside the cockpit and there is a cabin crew inside the cabin. As per regulatory requirements there have to be minimum 2 pilots in the, in the cockpit but for durations uh, more than 8 hours we need at least uh, 2 more. In our case the flight is around 8000 nautical miles so surely it will travel for more than 8 hours. So we will assume that we will uh, occupy the entire space of 4 crew members. So there will be 4 crew members in the cockpit. In the cabin we require 1 crew member for every 35 passengers to ensure their safety during emergencies and also their comfort and to provide them services. In case of Boeing 787 there is a provision for 7 crew members. So we will assume that all 7 are present which means there are totally 11 crew members each of whom is 200 pounds for their weight and for their baggage. So therefore the crew weight turns out to be uh, 1000 kilograms. But remember we have to also carry operational items and this has been specified as 963 pounds. So therefore the total crew weight would be 1437 kilograms. Let us look at the W payload estimation in this case of course it is already specified. But just to uh, complete uh, our uh, information, the payload consists of passengers, weight of the passengers, weight of the baggage and the weight of cargo. Uh, in our case we have been told that each passenger weighs 210 kilograms. So when we calculate the payload weight in pounds, we will use this simple formula. Converting it into kilograms, we can use uh, the formula as shown. For Boeing 787-8, we are told that the maximum payload is 100,000 pounds. So since there are 224 passengers therefore the payload with all the passengers and their baggage will be 21347.2 and in our design mission we assume that we do not carry any extra cargo. However because we can carry a total of 100,000 pounds therefore if required the cargo can be carried to the tune of 24 tons approximately. But in our case we are going to assume for the design mission 
that you are only carrying the 224 passengers and their baggage. Now let us let us see how we estimate the empty weight fraction. As I mentioned two unknowns are remaining the empty weight fraction and the fuel weight fraction. For the empty weight fraction we normally resort to historical information. So if you refer to the standard textbook by Daniel Raymer, the formula is A W0 power C into KVS where A and C are constants and their values are different for different aircraft types and we obtain these values from statistical curve fits as I will show you very shortly. The term KVS takes care of the additional weight due to variable sweep. So, in our case there is no variable sweep, it is a fixed wing aircraft. So, this factor will be 1.0. However, if we design an aircraft with variable sweep, the additional weight because of that would be approximately 4 percent of the uh, empty weight fraction. So, therefore, we have to add a factor of 1.04. So, if you look at the textbook by Daniel Raymer, there is a table given where the coefficients A and C both in metric units that is in uh, kilograms and in pounds are specified. The coefficient C remains the same whether you use the power coefficient C remains the same whether you use uh, the value in pounds or in kilograms. So, since we are going to work in SI system we will not worry about the units in pounds so we will go into metric. And since our aircraft is a jet transport aircraft we have to use the values as 0.97 for A when W0 is in kilograms and minus 0.06 for C. Let us have a look at how the empty weight fraction uh, trends are there for various aircraft type. So, in this particular figure the largest coefficients are generally for flying boats. You can see they can go as to as high as 0.7 followed by jet fighters jet trainer, general aircraft, general aviation uh, twin engine aircraft, powered sailplane, twin turboprop, agricultural aircraft, home built metal or wood aircraft, home built composite aircraft, sailplane unpowered, general aviation single engine aircraft. This is the curve for jet transport with which we are interested. Notice that the empty weight fractions can go as high as nearly 0.53 or 0.54 depending on the aircraft weight. And the lightest fractions are for the military cargo which are seldom beyond a value of 0.44 or 0.45. So, the highest empty weight fractions are seen for the flying boat and the lowest empty weight fractions are seen generally for the military cargo aircraft. So, this entire figure is shown in one shot in this particular graph which is taken from the textbook by Raymer. So, we have seen, so what we need to do is we need to choose a line which is relevant to our type. In our case it is jet transport. We assume some value of W0 for example, if we assume the weight to be 100,000 pounds, 100,000 kgs sorry, then we can estimate We bar directly as a ratio. So, if the aircraft weight is 100,000 kgs, then the empty weight fraction is around 0.49. Now, what do we do for Boeing 787-8? Unfortunately, we do not know its gross takeoff weight that is what we have to determine. So, therefore, uh, we cannot use this method directly. We cannot get the empty weight fraction as a number. We have to use this expression because in our case W takeoff is itself a variable which has to be determined. So, therefore, we will use the expression W e bar is equal to 0.97 W t o power minus 0.06. Let us look at how we estimate the next variable which is the mission fuel fraction. So, just a recap the fuel in the aircraft is basically mission fuel and reserve fuel. The mission fuel depends on the type of the mission that you are flying, the aerodynamics of the aircraft and the engine SFCs. Okay. We need reserve fuel for three major contingencies either for uh, missed approach, diversion or hold or some errors in navigation because of uh, and, and also route weather effects and plus a small amount of fuel will be trapped in the pipelines which will not be available to you. So, in our method that we follow for initial sizing we have a very fundamental assumption 
that the mission fuel segment weight is proportional to the aircraft weight in that segment. So, a heavier aircraft is going to consume more fuel and hence give a higher uh, fraction. And also we have to assume that the value of this view is independent of the general aircraft weight. It only depends upon the weight of the aircraft in that specific mission. It does not depend upon the weight of the aircraft in the other missions. Okay. So, going ahead, uh, here is our basic uh, simple mission profile. So, we number the segments from 0 to 7 with 0 being the start and 1 being the um, takeoff and 2 being climb etcetera etcetera. Okay. So, for the ith segment the mission segment weight will be wi upon wi minus 1 and the total fraction will be w7 by w0 in this case which can be obtained by just a multiplication of the individual mission fuel weight segment fraction. So, because of the assumption that we have made this particular uh, equation becomes very simple. So, all you need to do now is calculate using some method or by assumptions the weight of the aircraft at the end of the mission divided by the weight of the aircraft at the beginning of that particular segment. Okay. So, for every segment we have to now calculate the ratio as weight at the end of the segment upon weight at the beginning of that segment. So, for takeoff we are going to use some historical information. For climb also we will use some historical information. For uh, descent we are going to ignore the weights. So, this number w4 by w3 will be equal to 1. And similarly for the land for the approach and landing we are going to assume from historical data. So, uh, 3 of the mission segments are assumed from historical data. One of them is assumed to be uh, a segment which does not consume any fuel. So, what is remaining now is 3 segments w3 by w2 that is the cruise segment, w5 by w4 which is the loiter segment and w6 by w5 which is the diversion segment. So, all we need to do now is to calculate the segment fuel fraction for these 3 segments and then we can multiply all these terms together to get the total fuel fraction. So, as I mentioned for 3 of these segments that is the warm up takeoff and landing and also climb we are going to assume it from this table given by Daniel Raymer. And we will also assume that the fuel consumed as well as the distance travelled during the descent segments is going to be ignored. So, what happens when you use historical data is that in this mission this was the basic equation and 3 of these ratios rather 4 of these ratios are now replaced by const values available from uh, historical data. So, if you multiply those 3 that is 0.97 into 0.985 into 0.995 you will get 0 0.9506. In other words W7 by W0 is simply going to be a multiplication of the fuel fraction in 3 segments the cruise segment, the uh, descent uh, sorry the loiter segment and the diversion segment. So, before that we need to estimate the L by D max and again we look at historical data because there is no other way you can do it at this stage of the design when you do not know much about your aircraft. So, first of all let us look at what are the approximate values of L by D cruise L by D max. So, for, for a commercial jet transport it is generally specified that the values of L by D max would be nearly about 15 to 18 and the average would be 14.4. So, if you do not have any information or you do not have any data about the aircraft you are safe to assume these values. However, please note that modern day aircraft have a very high L by D max values typically of the order of 20. So, here is a graph taken from Raymer's textbook which uh, talks about the wetted area ratio that is S wet by S ref for various aircraft types on the basis of their shapes. Okay. So, what we do is we eyeball our aircraft in this particular figure. We have a rough idea right now about how our aircraft will look like. So, you just locate where your aircraft will roughly fit okay. and then 
just read the value of S wet by S ref. So, for Boeing 787-8 where do you think it will fit? So, I think the aircraft figure is very similar to Boeing 747 except that uh, Boeing 787 has got a much more slender wing compared to Boeing 787. So, that is why it is positioned slightly below and slightly to the left of uh, Boeing 747. So, it so turns out that the value the value of S wet by S ref at that particular point turns out to be 6. So, roughly it is a it is a whole number. Okay. So, that means you calculate the uh, reference area of this aircraft multiply by 6 you will get the wetted area. Now, once you know the wetted area you can calculate the wetted aspect ratio and then there is this figure which shows the typical L by D max values for various types of aircraft as a function of the wetted aspect ratio. So, first you calculate the wetted aspect ratio which is aspect ratio divided by the ratio that we got in the previous slide S wet by S ref. So, we locate the applicable line for us and then we estimate the L by D max. For Boeing 787-8 the line would be the topmost line which is for civil jets. Okay. We know that the wing aspect ratio is 10.58 and just now we have seen that the uh, S wet by S ref ratio is going is going to be approximately 6. So, please pause the video here and calculate the value of the wetted aspect ratio. It will be 10.58 divided by 6 the number comes out to be 1.76. So, then in this graph what we do is we start from 1.76 go to the appropriate line and then take a left turn and hit the vertical axis we see that the value of L by W is estimated to be approximately 21. So, this is how you can estimate the max L by D of the aircraft. Now, uh, fuel weight fraction is estimated using mission profile and the historical data for engines. Okay. So, first let us look at there are three segments for which we need the fuel, uh, fuel fraction in first is cruise the other is uh, the loiter and third is the diversion which is also a cruise. So, for W3 by W2 ratio we assume that we can follow the Breguet range equation which is as shown in the screen. So, what you need is V cruise and SFC cruise L by D cruise and if you know the value of R then you can invert this expression and you can easily get the value of WI minus 1 by WI where R is the cruise range. C cruise is the specific fuel consumption per second. Remember the units are very important. Uh, notice that the units of velocity are meters per second and the units of range are meters. So, therefore, to balance the units on both sides since L by D is dimensionless and log of weight ratio is dimensionless, the units of uh, C cruise have to be per second. Then in that case it will balance the units on both sides. So, the value of C cruise given in the requirements or in specifications is not in the units of per second, but we will convert it. Okay. And since we are looking at a uh, optimization of the fuel fraction for range of a transport aircraft, we know that the L by D in cruise should be approximately 0 0.866 times L by D max. Okay. So, let us see how to estimate the W3 by W2. So, what are the specifications? It specified that the R cruise is 8034 nautical miles which is 14887 kilometers. We also know the cruising altitude and you also know the cruising Mach number. So, first thing we do is we calculate the value of sonic speed at that particular altitude. This you can get from the atmospheric tables or you can calculate based on the value of temperature. L by D max was just previously calculated as 21. SFC cruise is given as 14.92 milligrams per Newton second. This is the value inputted from the Piano data. It has to be converted into per second by multiplying by 9.807 that is G and dividing by the uh, 10 power 6 to convert the milligrams into kilograms. So, let us calculate the values of V by uh, V L by D and W3 by W2. So, V is simply Mach number into the sonic speed which is 250.81 and L by D cruise is 0 0.866 times 21 which is already known. So, by inverting the equation you can simply get 
W3 upon W2 is equal to E power minus R into C by V into L by D and we get the value of W3 by W2 as 0 0.6205. Moving ahead, let us look at the fuel fraction in loiter segment W5 by W4. Again for this we use the Breguet endurance equation 1 by C L by D log of weight ratio. Here endurance E is in seconds and hence the SFCC lighter also has to be in per second. L by D and log weight ratio are dimensionless. Now since we are looking at a turbo jet engine aircraft, the L by D in lighter should be equal to L by D max. So let us see how these numbers pan out for Boeing 787-8. The endurance time is half an hour or 1800 seconds and L by D is 21, SFC is already given in during the loiter segment. So just calculate the value of W4, W4 in the same fashion. So first you calculate L by D in during the loiter which is equal to L by D max which is 21 and then you put in E power minus endurance into SFC divided by L by D, you get the value of 0 0.9901. So this is a very small loss, very small loss in the fuel fraction during a half an hour cruise. Then you go to diversion segment, diversion segment is like a cruise segment. So therefore the same formula applies, the same condition of 0.866 times L by D max also applies. Only thing is that the V cruise, SFC cruise, L by D cruise will change because it is at a different operating condition. So let us see how it is calculated. For diversion we are given that the distance to be travelled is 200 nautical miles at a height of 22117 feet at a Mach number of 0.535. So L by D max was 21 as obtained earlier. SFC during diversion is given, so you can convert it to per seconds. And then you just calculate the values of V, L by D and weight ratio. So V is obtained by calculating T first as gamma 288.16 minus the lapse rate into distance. Then when you know the value of uh, T, root of gamma RT is equal to A and since you know the Mach number you can get the value of V and L by D is also available to you as an input. So with that you can get W6 by W5 is equal to 0.9824. Let us estimate the mission fuel fraction for Boeing 787. This is our equation which had the putting together of the various constant terms. So at this point I think you should pause and have a look at the numbers and calculate the values. So we get it as 0 0.5737 and to bring in the fact that we need to carry 5 percent more mission fuel we are saying that W of W0 is equal to W0 bar which you obtained earlier okay, to be changed slightly and the index of 0.8 has to be changed. The reserve fuel fraction is 5 percent. So therefore WF bar is equal to 1 plus 0 0.05 into 1 minus 0 0.5737. Please take a pause and calculate the value the value comes out to be 0.4476. So this is our equation, uh, the master equation for the uh, initial sizing in which we have replaced WE bar by A W0 power minus C, WF bar remains and uh, we have just reproduced here the values from the previous slides. So W crew is the weight of the crew members plus the operating items which is 1437 kg. W pay is the design payload, this is the payload of these 224 passengers at the rate of 93.2 kgs each and uh, the values of A and C from Raymer's table are taken directly here for a jet transport aircraft and we have just calculated the value of uh, fuel fraction, mission fuel fraction as 0.4476. So what we do now is we now solve iteratively we assume the first value of uh, W naught as 4 times the payload plus crew. Okay. So we, while doing that you can have LHS as that value, then you calculate the value of 0.97 times W0 power minus 0 0.06 which is the W E bar 
and with that you can calculate the RHS, you can see there is a huge difference. So, in the next iteration what you do is you can take the average of the new RHS and the old LHS and repeat the calculations and you keep on doing this iteration a few times, few more times and finally, finally, finally it is going to converge to a value of 247631 kgs. Okay? Now, let us see the comparison between what we got and what has been quoted by Piano. So, for the for the first segment that is a warm up extent, we have estimated the weight to be 7431 kgs whereas Piano it is only 111, so there is a gross overestimation. For the climb uh, segment we have obtained 3604 whereas the value quoted is 4323, so that is a underestimation by us. During the cruise the value uh, obtained by us is overestimated by 22 percent. During the descent we have ignored the fuel consumed whereas in piano there is a fuel of 216 kgs. So, of course, there is a very large mismatch. For the loiter segment there is a reasonably good match of around 11 percent, we uh, have slightly underestimated. But for the loiter segment we have overestimated by the same amount approximately 12 percent, so this is also ok. And again if you go for the landing we have done a gross overestimation because we have uh, used Raymer's formula with that you uh, get a number of 714 whereas the actual value given by piano is only 181 kgs. Okay. Finally, the reserve fuel fraction will be overestimated because there is a gross mis uh, mistake in the uh, estimation of the fuel and hence there is also an overestimation in the mission fuel in the reserve fuel. Okay. So, the total fuel estimation is around 30 percent beyond. Now, we have to worry, we have to also look at the ratios. So, empty weight ratio has been underestimated, the actual value is 0.4959, but we have got 0.4604. Fuel weight ratio as I mentioned there is a 15 percent uh, excess, empty weight has also been uh, underestimated and fuel weight has been overestimated. In short, there is a 15 percent overestimate in the gross weight. Now, uh, why are there so much errors in the mission fuel segments as compared to piano? The reasons are very clear. First of all, in the warm up taxi out and take off, Raymer assumes a, a constant number of 0.97, whereas actual values are much lesser. During climb, in Raymer's approach, we have again a constant fraction of 0.985, actual value is different because climb happens in many, many segments. And in cruise, we have assumed a single cruise segment, whereas if you look very closely at the data, we find that the actual aircraft profile involves a step. So, there is a first cruise at 272 nautical miles at 37,000 feet, then you climb up by around 4,000 feet to 41,000 feet and then you cruise for the remaining portion. Okay. And in descent, Raymer approaches the uh, fuel in descent, whereas that is actually consumed. Okay. So, we have to now look at how to modify our calculations and for that we will uh, take the values for the, uh, we will take the values from the table given by Piano and try to modify the values according to that. So, here is the modified mission profile as suggested by CMOS in uh, his output. So, the first one is the takeoff segment, the second one is the climb segment. The third one is a short cruise at 37,000 feet at a constant Mach number. Then there is a small gain in altitude of 4,000 feet and then there is a bigger cruise of 5 to 4, 5 nautical miles at 41,000 feet but at the same cruise Mach number and also the same speed and then there is a descent to the lighter altitude of 5,000 feet. Then there is a lighter for half an hour, after that there is a missed approach and then a diversion, finally we have landing. So, we are going to now calculate the mission modified mission numbers for this particular profile. So, for better estimation of W1 and W0 the weights in the initial first segment and the last segment, first let us look at takeoff and initial climb. In this the first one is that the warm up and taxi out fuel is not uh, included in the numbers, actually it is a separate value. Uh, CMOS has provided the fuel in takeoff as 458 pounds 
and fuel in the initial climb is 352 pounds. So, with this we get some numbers and the takeoff weight is 476000 pounds. Hence, we can estimate that the weight in the initial segment ratio is only 0.9983 as compared to 0.97 given by Raymer. Similarly, in approach and landing, the landing fuel is neglected actually and uh, the weight of the fuel consumed in approach is 263 pounds and that in taxi is 167 pounds. The landing weight at the end of the mission is given as 303524 pounds. Hence, the weight ratio during approach and landing is only 0 0.9986. Okay. Now, let us look at a better estimation for climb fuel fraction that is W2 by W1. Now, if you look at uh, Raymer's textbook, there is a improved formula available where if the Mach number of the uh, aircraft at the end of the climb is known that is called as M n climb, then you can calculate W2 by W1 by this particular expression. So, what you can do is uh, for Boeing 787-8 what we will do is we know that the Mach number at the end, end of the climb is 0.85 and here is the graph from the textbook by Nicol uh, Nikolai and Karikner where they have shown this particular fuel weight ratio uh, for the uh, accelerated climb or climb segment. So, in our case the Mach number at the end of climb is 0 0.85. So, with that if you proceed on this line you can get the weight fraction as 0 0.978 whereas Raymer has taken a weight fraction of 0 0.985. For better estimation of the cruise fuel fraction there are two segments. In the first segment we go from 2 to alpha. Uh, where the range is 2722, the velocity is 488 knots to AS, uh, true air speed, SFC is given and L by D is given. So, with that you can get the W alpha by W2 as 0.8682. Similarly, for the second cruise segment which is from beta to 3, we have been given the value of range as 5245, the cruise velocity is the same, SFC is slightly different and L by D also is slightly different because the aircraft is lighter. So, putting in the equation we can get the weight fraction as 0 0.7580. So, if you want to get a better estimate of the uh, weight ratio during the cruise you just multiply these two numbers and whatever number you get would be a better approximation than the one that we got earlier. Similarly, if you look at the revised mission profile now we have 1 by 0, 2 by 1 alpha by 2, beta by alpha where beta by alpha stands for the small climb segment of 4000 feet then 3 by beta then 4 by 3, 5 by 4, 6 by 5, 7 by 6. Okay. Now, what we can do is looking at the numbers that we obtained earlier we can just insert these numbers 1 by 1, W1 by W0 the fresh one was 0 0.9983, W2 by W1 the fresh value was 0 0.978, then W alpha by 2 was 0 0.8682 beta by alpha we ignore because it is only 4000, it is only 4000 feet. There is of course, some fuel consumed, but in this big picture we can ignore that and we have no other way of estimating it. The second cruise segment we get a fuel fraction of 0 0.7580, descent segment is again uh, 4 by 3 we again ignore the value, 5 by 4 is the same as before, 6 by 5 is the same as before, 7 by 6 is a modified one 0.9986. So, with this the new value comes to 0 0.6241 which I think you should calculate by multiplying all these numbers. So, therefore, we can get the W by W0 or W fuel bar which would be 1 plus RFF times 1 minus weight ratio during the mission. The RFF remains same. So, pause and calculate the value of WF bar. The number comes out to be 0 0.3947. Now, let us also look at how we can get a better estimate for the empty weight fraction. Empty weight fraction is very important because it is a very large fraction. Raymer gives a simple formula in terms of empty weight fraction in terms of the uh, max takeoff weight. Uh, here is a graph taken from the textbook by Nikolai and Karikner which plots the empty weight fraction, empty weight versus takeoff gross weight in pounds for various uh, transport aircraft. Okay. These are all conventional metallic structure. Now, let us look at some aircraft from the Boeing family in this. So, these four dots uh, correspond to four aircraft in from the Boeing family which were uh, designed and used little bit few years ago. And these three dots represent the diagram the values for the aircraft which are little bit recent. So, we notice 
that the three aircraft that uh, have been designed recently by Boeing, they follow a trend line which is slightly different from the general trend line. So, that number the general trend line is 0.911 times W0.947 that is what Nikolai and Karakitner talks in general. But if we look at the data of three, these three contemporary aircraft uh, and if you uh, actually uh, try to obtain the equation of this line, it turns out that the MT weight is equal to 0.7758 times W0 power 0.964 and the MT weight fraction is uh, as shown on the screen. So, if we use this equation, we will get a better estimate. So, the revised gross estimate can be calculated by using the same formula. This is the original number, the originally we had 0 0.97 into W0 minus power minus 0 0.06 minus 0.4476, but now we know that the new fuel weight fraction is 0 0.3947 and the new coefficients for W0 are 0 0.7758 and minus 0 0.036. So, with this if you solve iteratively with the same initial assumption, finally the value would converge to 213770 which is a much better estimate for the gross weight as compared to obtained earlier. Hope your calculations were matching with these, thanks for your attention.